Elon Musk, meanwhile, slamming Twitter over trust and safety issues, suggesting that sweeping changes are coming. Here's the tweet. The obvious reality, as longtime users know, is that Twitter has failed in trust and safety for a very long time and has interfered in elections. Twitter 2.0 will be far more effective, transparent, and even-handed. Chris Bedford, executive editor of Common Sense Society. Chris, good morning to you. Uh, good morning. He's making news every day on this company. What's he going to do with it? He is. He's brought, he's brought a lot of excitement back to it. It's, uh, Twitter has not been particularly exciting. It hasn't come out with any really new technologies for years. And this has been something now, it's the chatter of the town every single day, revealing new different things. And what he's talking about here with election interference, I'm really going to be interested to see. He's talked about releasing some of the communications he says he has between the company and the, and the federal government. And this is something that's been largely overlooked or ignored in the conversation, where we're always, these last six years, talking about election interference, talking about disinformation, talking about dark money and donations. Well, if you're Twitter and you suppress a story that's harmful to one party, well, that's, that can be considered interfering with elections, at least it's interfering with the information voters might have access to. If you're Google... And and you're accused of, as the RNC is suing them for throttling their emails and putting them into spam folders at a much higher rate at the end of the month than any other time, then that could be considered election interference. And these are the sorts of things that we're starting to discuss, and it's wonderful to see someone go into these companies, take over and say, op and open all the windows and doors and say, all right, America, take a look. Take a look at what's going on in here and see what you think. All right. Uh, I, I agree with a lot of the points you made there. But then you got this Apple story that turned out not to be true. And apparently he went to Cupertino and met with Tim Cook and sent out the, talked about the beautiful headquarters of Apple and sent out this good conversation. Among other things, we resolved a misunderstanding uh, about Twitter potentially being removed from the App Store. Tim was clear that Apple never considered doing so. I mean, what, what was that all about? I mean, Chris, I remember not too long ago, well, some six, six, eight years ago, when Tesla was going through some really tough times, he was on the front page of the Wall Street Journal every day because of problems with the company. And it seems as if he's doing a similar thing right now with Twitter, and this is developing a pattern. Uh, do you see that? He's, he's a much more public businessman than, than a lot of others. He's gotten in some trouble, particularly with Tesla, for some of the things he said on Twitter, an app that he uses all the time. Uh, and he's a bit of a wild card. Elon Musk is different from most any of us in that he doesn't really answer to anyone. He, right now, he's the richest person in the world, he, but he doesn't have as many masters as a lot of other folks do. That makes him much less predictable. It makes him more of a kind of a chaotic agent. Uh, the, 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 the questions on the App Store, though, those are because Apple has previously shown capriciousness and attacking different groups like Parler, which was removed from the app when it uh, over a supposed January 6 involvement, when investigations later, real, uh, later exposed that Facebook and Twitter were used far more frequently by people who are coordinating uh, that riot at the Capitol. So there's, there's reason to be distrustful of Apple on that front, especially after they withdrew advertising, after people started to leave Twitter. But it'd be very good and very fortunate, a good thing for free speech to see them not actually follow through mm. with any of those uh, rumors. He doesn't answer to anyone. He doesn't have to answer to anyone. Uh, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Chris Bedford, nice to see you. Thanks for coming on. We'll talk again soon. Good to Come see you. Good to see you. You bet. Thanks.